Hi everyone, The Lone Wolf here and welcome back to the Sunday Recap, my weekly vlog where I talk a bit about my last week in games and since last week was basically transition week between 2020 and 2021, uh, I uh, did not get to play a lot of games. Uh, first of all, I still had to work. Um, so that uh, took uh, quite a little bit of time out of my schedule and then of course with uh, New Year's Eve and stuff like that I also spent a little bit of time with my family uh, in a safe way here in Belgium we're still basically in a lockdown and so uh, we did some outdoor activities some walking stuff like that but I still found a little bit of time to play EVE Online and uh, it's mostly been focused on what you can expect uh, doing a little bit of exploration in the Gila trying to find some cool sites to do and uh, we're also moving to a different part of space at this point hopefully we can find some cool stuff to do there uh, with a different a different background um, we've been semi-successful uh, the uh, Heimatar um method i would say definitely works i mean uh, on most evenings all i had to do was check tree systems and i found one to two uh, good combat sites uh, to do in those uh, eden Com fortresses and uh, just one system before that all of that three jumps away from rents that is very very uh, nice of course and it's been super consistent drop rates were actually pretty good as well and it's angel cartel they actually have very valuable stuff uh, that drops there so uh, I would say that that, that high Matar, uh, little bubble there is, is very nice but it's really the only uh, place that I found so far that uh, yields good stuff uh, in high Matar itself so very very concentrated but very close to the trade hub so super convenient I would say for people that don't have uh, too much time let's hope that there's not too much competition that shows up uh, I'm already uh, moving on to a different region hopefully we can find some cool stuff there uh, but the Nivon Online. that's really what I've been focusing on I've been trying to keep up with my PI as well uh, so you can easily restart your extractors but I can't pull anything from the planet when I'm too far away so I do think that I'll have to incorporate uh, like a jump clone to Sama in my schedule so that I can do both my PI extractions and uh, my blueprint copies I did start a new batch of them uh, like 10 days ago I have to complete them it's in an NPC station so it's safe and it takes uh, longer it also costs more ISK but uh, it's gonna get the job done and I really looked at them uh, we're gonna get a nice margin on most of the stuff that I produce um, so that's something that I still have to do as well uh, and other than that, well, we have that major, major battle that happened, of course, in EVE Online uh, with uh, quite a bit of destruction, which is very cool. I love that that can happen. Uh, there's no game uh, like it. It's months and years of uh, effort uh, from the players that have been uh, blown up in a massive conflict. Uh, very, very unique stories. But some people are asking, well, are you going to cover that? Or are you going to try to get over there? Uh, that's probably not happening unless I really find a lot of time all of a sudden. Uh, I personally am not a big fan of the big tie-dye slugfest. You have to, I have to be honest, it's not for everyone and it is definitely not for me. You're spending hours in uh, basically a constant lag situation where everything is very unresponsive, super hard for your client, your PC. Uh, I personally rather uh, have small scale stuff where the game runs uh, in optimal conditions than those tie-dye slugfests, but they happen, they're part of the game and if very large part of the player base actually does um, sort of enjoy them I'm going to say it's just the epicness the scale of such fights that are so unique and uh, that do attract a lot of players so absolutely uh, respect that my hats off to everyone that takes part in these big tie-dye slugfests and uh, you know just uh, tries to grind it out for hours and hours on end um, it's it's very impressive it tends to make the news and things like that and it's a big draw for a lot of players but well, luckily, EVE Online is of course a big sandbox and uh, you can play whichever way you want. That means that uh, you don't have to uh, jump into every single tie-dye fight that happens if you don't want to. You've got all the options open. Uh, anyone can really enjoy EVE Online. You just have to find your play style and uh, you set your own goals. It's, it's a pretty damn unique game in that respect. In my opinion, still the greatest game uh, that's out there. So I'm, I'm looking forward to all my time that I'll spend in EVE in 2021. And next to EVE Online, I also spent a little bit of time in the world of Warcraft. Uh, there's like daily and weekly routines that uh, basically help you stay on top of uh, your 
character progression up to a point that you can really decide yourself so for instance for me uh, honor grind conquest grind uh, is stuff that feels doable and so i've been keeping up with that for a couple of weeks then of course you have the weekly reset where then you have a couple of quest chains to do and things like that to get your renown up uh, the maw uh, for uh, for a little bit of currency with venari and then you have torghast of course for uh, for the ash so that you can get your legendaries um, all of that is basically very doable and if you want to do even more you can do so you can do raiding you can do mythics you can go into arenas try to get your ratings up all that good stuff so uh, i do feel like with shadowlands they hit uh, the nail on the head when it comes to um uh, being able to scale your own ambitions in the game and then right still have very uh, good character progressions uh, no matter which scaling uh, you basically choose you always have something uh, to do something to shoot for but it is a daily grind and uh, i'm starting to feel that myself so in the last part of the week i actually dropped off a little bit on my world of warcraft activity uh, focus a little bit more on eve online on the family uh, maybe on thinking a little bit about what i want to do with the channel uh, um, if, if I want to keep uh, playing a lot of intense WoW. I also, I'll, I'll be honest there, I saw a video uh, from Asmongold covering the bot problem in the world of Warcraft. Um, it is, uh, at least it feels to me like it's a hundred times worse than in EVE Online. You had whole regions and uh, several layers just filled with bots constantly constantly uh, basically uh, creating gold into the game inflating everything uh, into the moon and really you know devaluing all the effort that you as a player put into the game and on top of that you have that constant reset schedule that exists no matter what in the world of warcraft if it's not a new patch it's going to be uh, a new season or a new expansion that will eventually just wipe everything out that you have done before except maybe uh, like yeah, the um, the appearances that you've collected and things like that so uh, I'll be honest uh, if I'm going to put a lot of effort into a game it's going to be EVE Online rather than WoW uh, I'm definitely in enjoying the game it's still the good old WoW uh, it still works with that Blizzard quality everything is very responsive servers not always what you would expect them uh, to be but overall it is a very fun smooth uh, and nice experience and uh, compared to BFA I would say that the start of Shadowlands uh, has been a lot better with less bloat you can very easily uh, set see your progression path see which uh, task you're supposed to do on a daily and on a weekly basis and if you don't want to go super hardcore you really don't have to and you can still uh, make uh, considerable um, improvements to your character I for instance have full honor gear bought some uh, stuff from the auction house since I'm both a miner and a herbalist so I just grab lots of stuff sell it on the auction house and then I use that gold to grab some extra upgrades and then I got a couple of odd pieces from uh, from the raids and from the conquest points and you know honestly if I look around in the random BGs and things like that that I have to do in order to keep up with that uh, I'm a lot more geared than a lot of the other players so I do feel like just doing what I did which was really not all that hardcore and all that much uh, managed to put me in a very nice position uh, when it comes to just joining random stuff uh, in the game and that's been a lot of fun but I just don't know if I can keep the grind up perhaps um, I'm going to slow things down a little bit and decide on a schedule that I feel is more doable because I want to combine it I'll be honest with more EVE Online rather than less EVE Online and at the moment uh, I do feel like it's eating into my EVE Online time a little bit so we'll try to find a balance we'll try to find out what I want to do next as well because Path of Exile should be coming out with uh, an interesting um with interesting information on their next league uh, coming next week so that's definitely on my radar as well and then well it's going to be WoW time that's going to uh, be reduced in order to play Path of Exile rather than uh, EVE Online time because uh, yeah if there's any place where your efforts are still rewarded and maintain their value we've seen that in EVE talk uh, Tritanium that I mined 10 years ago is still worth just as much as Tritanium that I mined today uh, that's another unique aspect of EVE that uh, you 
honestly should not underestimate um, you know for a game like World of Warcraft yeah all right as long as it's fun it's good but uh, you also know that eventually you're just going to all those efforts are going to become meaningless and in EVE Online that is not the case so gonna try to refocus a little bit and uh, we'll see how things evolve in the upcoming weeks and months but that was my last week in EVE, uh, in, EVE uh, in games guys thank you very much for watching and as always I'll see you next time